2022 it is almost November and I am almost to the ranch that I stay at in Kansas. It's got a few more hours. Um, beyond excited if you're not having a tag last year, being one of the very few non residents that was in that small percentage of people that did not draw, I have a tag this year. And Blake and I both have a tag in Kansas. Blake and I both have a tag in Colorado. So we've got a little more work to do this year in front of us than we did last year. But uh, I feel good about it. I've got basically three weeks here to get this done in the two states. And if I get done early, I actually still have a Montana general deer tag too. And I would love to go up there and try to fill that, but only if I have time. Uh, so we'll see. I'm going to be getting down to Kansas a few days before the boys do, so hopefully I can have my handle on uh, what's there available for us this year and what the drought has done. It is crazy dry. They haven't really gotten any moisture since April, so might isolate them to uh, being within close proximity of water tanks for cattle. Um, I'm assuming, that, I'm guessing that all the streams and creeks that are normally down here are going to be dry. So, we'll find out. Okay, Kansas day two. Um, yesterday, I hadn't even changed out of my street clothes that I drove down here in. I um, never had an opportunity to, to put a stock on anything that I, I wanted to, um, unless, we're, unless I was gonna do it to some uh, does. I did see one shooter uh, first thing in the morning in a great spot. He turned and went on to private. So, and I saw him again this morning too. He was there, but he, no interest in the does that are over on the property that I can hunt. He's just chilling out, not doing anything. I haven't seen any rut activity. And Kansas right now looks like a nuclear bomb went off. Like there's no no green, there's no living organic material coming up out of the ground. All the crops they planted, um, they basically had to till them, till them uh, not till them up, but chop them, swath them, roll them up, feed them to the cattle. They didn't head out mile over the corn so i don't think he i think he's they haven't gotten rain since april <laughs> it's it's november one it's so dry and the cattle look pretty skinny the deer actually look better than the cattle and they, but there's there's water for the ca cattle so there's water for the deer and there's enough here for them to eat but the weeds the bedding areas that i normally hunt my style of hunting on the ground there isn't much weeds there to hide a stock in so if i do find one that i want to kill um gonna be having used terrain topography to to cover our approach so it can be different i don't think it's going to be the normal you know lots of options and fun times so anyways blake and cam will be here in a couple days um be great if I could tag out, get it on video before they get here, and then I can just focus on helping Blake so we can get to Colorado by the opener. Um, but we'll see. So I came down this creek. Uh, it's got water in it, and it's got deer in it. <laughs> I've made it. You can still see the truck 
and I've ran into three bucks, all all three year olds I think. First one I got to about eight feet from, I got video of him. Second one saw me first, but I was able to get behind a tree, show him the decoy, and he came in at 65, kind of killed him, both of them weak. coverage and he just, he just froze. He just will not move. I've tickled the antlers. I've grown and start weeds at him. I want him. I want to work further down the creek, but I got a young buck in the way. But this is good. Um, they're alone. They're not with does. It's it. Usually by November one, things are shaking down here. And, last year with his, uh, his antique bow where the hero was like six seconds to make it 25 yards um, it's got short g2s it's got a chocolate rack um, either way he's the best buck I've seen and I saw him disappear into a little bottom uh, which isn't normal um, but there's no grass up top where they normally bed and the deer are so spooky this year They'll see a three quarters mile away and they're taken off. I, I think it's because of the lack of grass and cover. Um, so anyways, I'm going in blind. I'm just gonna creep along here and basically still hunt it in glass and try to pick him up uh, with a doe. So that's good. starting to show signs to rut um, on my trees out here so they use old fence posts, fence posts all the time. Um, actually the buck that Blake and Cam found this morning, i um, not sure, well one he's bedded on private if he, no matter what, which buck he is, but I went over there and saw him, it's not, nothing we want to shoot. And the other bucks that we uh, uh, found, they're, they were decent. Um, just need another year or two to see the video. I crept in. I shouldn't say crept. I just walked in. It was so windy. Um, I got to about 15 yards before the wind swirled in there and they blew out. But um, be good bucks in the future. And we are continuing to look. The weather is broke. Uh, it's cold. So, but still dry as can be. This is one of the few areas right here behind me. This is about as tall as the grass gets right now. And all that is from last year. Nothing new grew this year, except for maybe in the ditches, along the roads, um, and along rivers. Never seen it this dry. And the, the rancher that I'm staying with, you know, he's mid 70s, he's been living here and ranching his whole life. He said he's never seen it this dry. Um, there's enough food and water to, for them to live, but getting close to him with zero cover. You know, in these little few little spots like this, we find it. Like I said a little buck just got up over here. Um, we need to we need to have a little bit more rut action so we can get them moving. All right, well it is day two, Kansas. Uh, Tony's been here for a few days before we got here. Um, we found a couple pretty good bucks, but nothing. Nothing crazy yet. The game's changed a little bit from last year. Um, they're in a horrible, 
drought and there's just not near as much cover for these deer so they're a little bit more condensed into certain areas it seems like but we still haven't found a, a no-brainer um, you know they're they just don't seem to be really interested in the does just yet so saw six does this morning with a little buck and you know you'd think with that many does concentrated in one spot that there would be a, a pretty good buck in there somewhere but just nothing so I'm just gonna keep covering ground and see what we can turn up Tony hadn't turned up anything yet this morning just a bunch of young bucks we were about the same found one half rack buck that it's probably three or four year old but other than that it's been pretty slow this morning so far so um yeah we're just going to cover some ground and see what we turn up well, cam made himself useful this morning so that's the good news uh We've seen a couple of good bucks this morning. They're chasing, they're on their feet. So I think this weather and stuff uh, coming in is changing their tune a little bit. Cam spotted a buck that just stood out of his bed just to kind of readjust and he popped back down. He's in a good spot. Um, Tony's coming right now. Uh, we're gonna put the 95 on him, see what he looks like. And I don't know, we may or may not go in there and get a closer look at him he didn't look like a no-brainer but he also didn't look like a dink he looked looked decent at the very least so still see the top of his rack sticking up out of the out of the tall grass they don't have much grass to choose from to choose from um, I can't overstate how much different it is here this year than it was last year there's just looks like everything has been scalped and it's pretty sad really but there's just not a whole lot of places for these deer to hide and um, I think it's got them on edge a little bit they just feel naked but here's Tony pulling up now we'll put the spotter on this dude and see what he looks like I think we're fixing to make a move. We're at least going to get a look at this buck that, uh, that we just found bedded and see what he looks like. He looks pretty good when he gets up. We think it might be the buck that we uh, saw earlier this morning, potentially, and if it is, he's a, he's a shooter. So get in there and see what happens and make a game time decision. I'm going to make him shoot it. <laughs> he's only got two and a half days. <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right. Ready, Freddy's? even got to full draw. I think that is the buck. The walk of shame. 
15 yards from a solid 165 buck. Crazy mass. That might even been bigger than that. What are we at, 15 yards? About 30. Oh. I have no idea why he got up. I was going to get another 10, 15 yards closer. He, I, th I think he just got up to get up. And now his bush was blocking his vitals perfect. I was like, mm -hmm. We were wondering, I was wondering if you got more on the east side of him, if you'd have been able to shoot in there, but I think he probably would have saw you. Well, I was kind of going to cut that way, and then I was just going to get 10 yards short of that bush, and I was just going to draw and stand up and shoot him laying mm -hmm. there. I could have. He's really nice. Yeah, he's really heavy. Mass, like crazy. Really heavy. Do you think that's the same buck? It's absolutely the same buck. Yeah, that's my thought. Yeah, it's tail missing. Oh, right. Yeah, same buck. Bobcat deer. It's the second mature buck in three years that I've seen in here with no tail. Well, I killed the last one, so... All right, so Blake messed up a stock today, so I bought him a steak. Maybe that'll make him stop crying, because he's inside crying to his dad right now. But um, today we found uh, three or four new mature bucks. So that is great news, and uh, you know, I don't think we got to worry about. We're gonna find enough bucks. It's just a matter of getting one in a good spot and having it work out. It almost worked today, and that buck that Blake stalked in on was, he was so close to being dead and didn't know it. It just, he just stood up at the wrong time. Blake was moving in and the damn buck just decided to stand up out of the blue and caught him off guard, so. So I bought him a steak. and baked potatoes. Which I should probably check those. Oh yeah, they're done. All right, we got a buck bedded with a doe down here. I didn't really get a good look at him, so I don't know if he's a shooter or not. He looked decent. Um, Super, super windy. They're in this little creek draw. We're gonna get in the in the creek and stalk down there, pop up the decoy, and see what happens. Get a better look at him at the very least. Get some good footage. So, uh, got a lot of a lot of wind noise. So shouldn't have any trouble getting in pretty tight. So see how it goes.
Bang, you're dead. He just needed to be muy grande. something I wanted to talk about or ever have to admit but I have to apologize to Blake right now because as much as I make fun of him cutting himself I uh I'm one of those dumbasses that doesn't know how to cut open an avocado apparently and um I'm pretty sure this one's gonna need stitches so <sighs> it really sucks to have to apologize to Blake It's our last morning in Kansas. We found the buck that I stalked in close on uh, yesterday, but he was just on property that we couldn't hunt. Um, <clears throat> this morning it's super foggy, which is good for deer movement generally. A little bit of drizzle of rain, but it's going to make it really hard to see, which is a big thing out here. So uh, hopefully it'll burn a little bit of this off in the next 30 minutes or so i'm hoping once the sun gets up and we can see a little bit better but yeah this is pretty much the last two raw here in kansas and then uh gonna head over to eastern colorado for the mule deer tag so hopefully we can make something happen this morning turn something up Okay, update, uh, I believe it's the, November 8th. Bucks in Kansas are actually rutting pretty good. Um, quality is definitely down. We've seen some decent bucks, but for this area, I should be seeing more. Um, I've talked to some locals, and there were some really good bucks killed early uh, in the season, like mid-October, third week of October, that uh, were patterned on water because there's in spot, a lot of spots there's not. Like most of the water is just cattle tanks and a few small cricks. Um, we've had a chance on a couple of good ones. Uh, Blake got to sub 30 on a great buck the other day. I'm sure he'll have talked about it already. Um, but that buck now is living on private property. We can't turn him up. And, um, we're, we're finding young bucks, like three year olds, two year olds, but just not a lot of the good ones. Good news is it's actually raining right now, so or misting anyways. But there's a little bit of moisture, and the uh, it's, it's very very much needed. So this is our last day together in Kansas before we go to Colorado together to hunt there for however long it takes for me. And uh, I think Blake's gonna give it 
six days, five days. Um, and then I'm, you know, right now I'm trying to get him a deer and I'll come back here after Colorado. So yesterday, can't really see it. It's bruised up a little bit. Got a bunch of stitches in my hand. I think it's karma for giving Blake a bunch of crap about always cutting himself, but I had uh, blown a stalk on a good buck that's got kicker on one side and like a his G2 comes to, curls down like an upside down J hook. He was super cool. Uh, at least a four year old. Saw him kind of disappear in some sorghum that hadn't been cut yet. Didn't really come up very well and you could get through it pretty easy and had pretty good visibility and I don't know how, but he was burrowed in there like a jackrabbit and I walked right past him. And he let me get 20 yards past him before he caught my wind and exploded out of there. Hopefully you'll get a little bit of the video. It's a good buck. But anyways, been pretty tough. The only excitement was getting stitches at the local uh, urgent care yesterday for me. So we'll keep at it. This last day, I've got a pretty decent 10 point it looks like. Like a 150 type buck. He's working this way and we're gonna try and get in this cut field and basically just try and cut him off. They're acting so nervous today because all the wind and everything, it's just, it's the deer are just acting totally unusual to what they acted like last year. And I think it's just the lack of cover and how dry it is. It's just the conditions are horrible, but he's coming this way. We've got the wind perfect. So we're going to sneak through this cut field and maybe try and get behind a, a hay bale, pop a doe decoy out and just basically try and get in his way and see what happens. But kind of the last two raw, there's another eight point that Tony saw this morning that's bedded in a little spot that's a big mature deer. He's, he's probably 120 inch eight point, but he's super mature. So if we can't get on this one, we may go try and turn him up and then we'll be headed to Colorado after the mule deer. actually bedded out in the middle of this plowed field so eventually he's gonna come this way but I think what we'll do is we'll circle down a little bit further kind of get some of these hay bales between us and him and get up right up to the edge of this cut field and show him the decoy and see if maybe he decides to get up and come over that's all I know to do
I think we can get around off the other side of this hill and keep him just out of sight. And he's bedded out in the plow field, but he's right up against the terrace facing the other way. So, I mean, it's probably 100 to 1 odds that we get a shot at him, but at this point we don't have a whole lot to lose. So, I think we'll bail out, go around, and see what happens. Hopefully he'll stay put or move to a better spot would be more ideal. Where's he at? Make sure he hadn't moved before we bail out. That'll be still right there. Well, that uh, almost worked. Um, finally, I just told Cam, I said, I'm just gonna walk out there with the decoy and I mean, what do we have to lose at this point? We, he spooks, we'll go try and find another buck and can't sit here all day. He's bedded out in the middle of, I mean, there's nothing in that field taller than an inch. It's solid dirt. Uh, so I grabbed the decoy, started walking out there, I told Cam just to stay behind. It was going to be hard enough for one person to do it, and much less two. And I got to 51.2 yards on that deer somehow. As I got off in there, it was more terraced than I thought it was. And uh, I was able to get down real low and get behind one of those terraces, and I just crawled on my hands and knees. And I got to 51 yards, and that was about as close as I felt comfortable getting. Um, again, there was nothing but a little mound in between me and him and I was laying on my belly. And he was looking almost dead away from me, but not quite. And uh, as soon as I popped up, I had a tumbleweed come between me and him. And I don't know if that's what caused him to turn around and look or if it was something else, but uh, yeah, he basically turned around as soon as I started to draw and he barreled out of there and no shot so it was almost really really cool it was almost the best talk of my life <laughs> but anyway i think we're gonna go make maybe one more lap real quick see what we see but i'm ready to go look at some mule deer in colorado tony's got a white tail tag too there so um i think there's been a lot more moisture there than there has been here um I don't think it's been an excessive amount of moisture, but it's definitely better than it than it is here. Here, this, the conditions are just. I know we keep saying it, but they're. It's it's pretty sad to to see it the way it is out here, and it's it's made getting on these deer really really tough. And I've gotten super lucky to have the two opportunities that I've had. Um, so, I'm ready to go look at some mule deer. We've seen a lot of big mule deer here in Kansas, but don't have a tag for them, so. All right, it is uh, game time in Colorado. We got here last night. Um, I play on that buck yesterday in Kansas. Kind of blew up on me at the last second. Uh, got really close, but we are in Colorado now, and we have found a shooter mule deer. And I think I got him bedded down up against the cut bank, and the wind's good. It's not blowing very hard. It's really calm today, so that could make things a little bit iffy, but. As long as we can uh, sneak in there, we should have a pretty solid play on him. It looks like a really good deer. Uh, upper 70s, low 80s, 4x4. Got really good front forks. He's got a real good back fork on one side. A little bit weak on the other side, but good mass, decent width. So, um, yeah, Tony's sitting over there now. And uh, I think I just watched him tuck up into that, that cut bank, and I hadn't seen him come out. So I think they're right in there in a little hole.